Okay, that's all the wait time I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna scroll down on the screen. Again, this is the Health Science Session 2 for District 214 Career Nights. My name is Kyle Burritt. I'm an Associate Principal at Elk Grove High School. And I'm gonna kind of be the moderator and firing questions at our panelists here tonight. We have with us, and you can see on your screen, Elizabeth uh, Pagenkoff comes from uh, Harper College. And then Priya Nair comes from uh, Athletico, who's a, a physical therapist. And then Beth Bronson is a teacher in District 214 at two of our schools, Rolling Meadows and Buffalo Grove High School. And then we have Victoria Perez, who is a current student at Rolling Meadows High School and what we call our middle college here. So we get to hear all about her experiences as a, as a current student in the program. So we're going to start with um, Priya, but before we do that, I just wanna kind of give a plug for this website, discover214.org. Um, that is where there is a wealth of information. Uh, you can find uh, the slides that we are gonna go through tonight. There's just a few, and you might not be able to read them uh, because they get kind of small, but you can find the career pathway information, the entire booklet. And there's a, just a wealth of knowledge and resources there and links that you can peruse. It's almost information overload. And so after tonight, if you go there and you see a question um, or you have a question from tonight, rather, you can go there, find an answer or find a resource or a contact that can help get you the answers you need as you're talking about your, your pathway in your journey here as you start selecting courses and we start getting the next school year started. So without further ado, I will go ahead and I will start with Priya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump up on your screen to the career pathway document that was aforementioned. But um, Priya, you're, you're a trainer, or sorry, a physical therapist at Athletico. So can you just run us through a typical day? What does that look like? What are the tasks that you're responsible for? Um, assume we know nothing about physical therapy and, and tell us what it is like. Sure. Um Thank you everybody for having me. Um, so I work at uh, Atletico at the Buffalo Grove uh, North uh, location. So my typical day pretty much starts with, uh, I mean, patient care. We have our patients scheduled ahead of time. Um, most of the work, uh, if it's a existing patient, we usually come in and have, I mean, now with the COVID protocol, um, those protocols have are taken care of. And then um, we have patients who's, um, the ones who are already in our schedule, we obviously have their uh, treatment planned out. But if it was a new patient, typically when the patient comes in, they go through a process called evaluation. So we kind of talk to the patient, find out what issues they have and um, things. And then we custom plan a treatment plan for the patients. Um, the ones who already are in, in the pro in the plan in the therapy program they usually every session that they come in we try and kind of introduce a new exercise or new activity now keep in mind all these exercises that we do plan for them is based on uh, them being able to do functional activities with ease because most of the patient clients that we see are orthopedic patients who and some a few pain management patients so um because of the issue, activities of daily activities might be affected for them. So we try and plan out and try and each session, we try and kind of increase the level of the activity so that it makes it more easier for them to okay. function. What, uh, what training is necessary for a job in that field? Certifications, degrees, uh, experience? So yeah, so at entry level, it's basically you have, I mean, right now, because you, the... Uh, we have to take a license exam. And for that, the entry level right now is the the doctorate, uh, the doctorate in physical therapy. So master's with a doctorate program. Um, and then once you pass the license exam is when you can start working uh, in the clinics. Um, certification programs are encouraged because specialization, there are a lot of new, I mean, different um, treatment methodologies that you can use. Um, so. It, it always gives an added advantage if you're certified in different uh, ways of treatment. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how could a high school student prepare for a job in your field? 
I always say it's um, volunteering, um, trying to get as much as experience in uh, trying to come into clinics um, and just kind of observation um, to see how the whole function, the system works. And that's, that's probably the best way that they get to uh, know what happens in a PT life. Um, yeah, in terms of, in, yeah, that, that would be kind of the best way, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you could go back to high school, what would you tell yourself that would have helped you on, in your career? Be really good at anat. <laughs> Those are things, anatomy is one of the things that really helps. I mean, having a good um, a baseline in that, a foundation really helps you just knowing, especially in our field, knowing the exact muscle movements, the exact thing um, does help. So there are often times that sometimes that you have to kind of go back and refer to see like exactly is this what I need to do kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll come back. Um, and we may have some follow-up kind of questions regarding that, but thanks for sharing. Uh, that yeah. is very interesting. So I'd like to also talk to uh, Elizabeth uh, and uh, Ms. Pagenkoff, talk to us. You're, you're, you're one of our, our longstanding dual credit partners and you represent Harper College. Um, can you talk about the program specific to this pathway uh, that Harper College offers and, and what, what makes it really our connection so great? I think one of the neat things about uh, uh, the dual credit program um, at um, the high school and that, first of all, dual credit means that you are getting both high school credit and college credit. So you are actually a college student um, fairly early and it's kind of kind of neat in that. There are certain things that are required for, for college level is that you have to you know, be dedicated in, in all of that. We have a CNA program that is at the, the high schools and you and I started one, the first one uh, in 214 at Elk Grove. Um, and to me, CNA is such a fantastic course because you get the chance to try what it would be like to be in nursing or in some of the uh, hands-on of healthcare. Uh, you get a chance to go ahead and see if this is truly what you want to do. My experience myself was that I started off with anything to do with healthcare that I could get into as far as classes, even in high school. And uh, each and every one of them made a difference in what I thought was important and, and it just kept reinforcing, no, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, I am a registered nurse and that's why CNA is such an important thing for me is that it gets people into um, finding out whether nursing is something that they want to do. Um, again, it is a college level course, so there are certain things that you would be required to do, um, but that's kind of the fun thing about it, I think, too, is that you get that experience and get to know a little bit about what college life is like before you even step through the doors and that. Yeah, um, that's exactly uh, what, what's great about it. So, you know, what, um, what about admission criteria? How does that work? How does a student get, get in? Well, for, for particularly things like CNA, you would still need to do a, a college application. It would be probably your first college application, which is kind of cool. And once you have that college uh, application done for Harper College, you are now a Harper College for the rest of your life. You're a student for them. So somewhere down the line, you might pick up some other classes and that. So that would be it. You do have to be able to do fairly well on some of the English uh, prerequisites. You have to be able to, to read the, uh, the college level uh, books. So that's important. I would like to mention too, it's not a college requirement in that, but I see on your list here about algebra. Algebra is super important. I know it's math and everybody goes, ooh, math. But your algebra grades and things like that predict how well you are at doing some critical thinking types of stuff. So in, when you're in high school, try your best at, at doing well at any of the algebra classes. Um, the other prerequisites are pretty much, that's it, is having a good uh, understanding of the English language as far as reading uh, college level uh, books and that. Once you've done that, we will help you as you are progressing through the class to make sure that you meet the requirements for the hospitals that we go to. That's part of the CNA program too, is that we have the class and you learn the materials, but then you get to go to clinical and actually help people in the uh, hospitals or in the long-term care settings. 
Yeah, that's great. And hopefully we'll hear a little bit about that from Victoria in a little bit. Um, I yeah. want, want to take this opportunity as we transition to uh, Beth Bronson, who is a teacher in, in our schools. Um, but what you're, what you're seeing on the screen, and, and Elizabeth mentioned this, this is the full career pathway document, okay? So you heard her talk about different courses, CNAs, college nursing assistant, uh, and, and you see the areas in red, those are, those are the pathway specific courses. But what 214 does in our pathways program is lay out the entire gamut of courses, the math, the social science, the fine arts, the English courses that all go along with that pathway. So you kind of get a good feel for what the what the entire day would look like. Um, and then, of course, the area of, of importance to you uh, in your pathway is the areas in red. So, um, so Beth, can you tell us a little bit about the um, the sequence of courses in this career area uh, here in 214? Yes, thank you, Kyle, and congratulations to everybody for showing up tonight. It's really important to start looking for your career or your college and your career pathway ahead of time. So the CNA class, two of the prerequisites that are on there, you have to take intro to health careers and then medical terminology. And this is a really important one because stuff that we do as a CNA addressing body parts and observations that the nursing assistant is going to make, you need to know that medical terminology, just like our physical therapist said, you need to know the anatomy terms. So I, I myself was a CNA in high school and I get it. It seems a little overwhelming to think you're going to have to do all of this physical work, but it gives you a window into the healthcare field to see, is this something you think you could do every day? Um, I really love teaching high schoolers to recognize if this is something that they're strong at, or maybe it's something that they're going to back off of. So I, you, COVID was very interesting. Now, personally, I just retired. I am a registered nurse. I just retired after COVID. Um, Victoria can tell you I have some very interesting stories to tell. Um, healthcare, you have to be very flexible. So I think that's something that I like to share with people. Um, CNA, we once you pass the class, which is like uh, Ms. Pagankoff said, is the dual credit class, and you get your clinical hours, then you're qualified to sit for the state exam. Once you pass a state exam, you have a career right there. You can work as a certified nursing assistant, which is a job that's in high demand with benefits. Maybe while you're working as a CNA, you decide to pursue an LPN or a respiratory therapist or an ultrasound tech, or maybe you wake, make your way to nursing school. Um, one of the things I like to tell the CNA students when we're in the clinical setting, observe how many different jobs there are. The respiratory therapist is a job that's in such high demand, even before COVID, they were doing sign-in bonuses. And that's a two-year program at Harper. Uh, ask the speech therapist, what do they really like about it? Where did they go to school? Uh, what is their typical day like? Um, an exercise physiologist, a pharmacist, occupational therapist. Um, think about the physician's assistant job that did not even exist 15 years ago. Uh, many nurses take a path where they're going to be a nurse practitioner or a nurse anesthetist. So I really love to expose the students to everything. Um, and there's something about being in clinical, helping patients or residents at the long-term care facilities. It, it makes you feel better when you help them. And, and just, just being an, showing empathy in the healthcare field. Um, there's a small percentage of people that get through the class and decide, oh, this is just not for me. But then that's good because when you close the door, if you just decide healthcare is not exactly what you thought, it opens up other doors. Maybe research or teaching is where you're going to go. Um, and then because it's a dual credit class, it looks good on your college application. It looks good on your resume. And it helps you decide if this is the path you want to take. That's, that's all, all great advice. Um, you know, but you mentioned CNA, LPN, and, and some other things. One, what is that? And then two, what credentials could a 214 student get? So when the, if the students successfully pass the test, they're able to work as a nursing assistant. And we do have several people when they're seniors in high school, they're able to work as nursing assistants. I mentioned LPN because there are programs that you can take after you're a CNA 
uh, that you can get a two-year degree and then maybe you use that to work and springboard into getting your RN and then maybe you get your master's and I, it's kind of a nice clinical ladder to climb. Yeah, yes, very much. I just wanted students to know, we sometimes we throw around a lot of terms and to make sure that they understand they can leave with a credential, a, a state license as a certified nursing assistant. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Victoria, um, we would like to know uh, and hear from our students. So you are a current student, uh, Rolling Meadows High School and Middle College, which is also represented on, on the screen there. So kind of a, the first question is, you know, what is Middle College and kind of what other courses are you in? Okay, so Middle College is basically where I'm able to take part of like being a senior in high school while also being a freshman in college. Um, I'm taking three other courses at Harper College. I take first year seminar, which is just basically like a transitioning from high school to college class. Um, I'm taking psychology and I'm taking biology 160, which is basically anatomy and physiology. Um, I would definitely say that that biology class is, it's all memorization. Like once you get to like your college classes and like you want to go in healthcare, it's very like you have to dedicate like all your time to it. Um, it's, it's very different from high school. It's a lot more challenging, but, um, yeah. So I basically, I have three classes in total at the high school as well. So I do on and off. And since everything's online, I'm not going to school. Um, I sign in to my high school Zoom classes while my professors assign me homework, which is always due. Like all the assignments are majority of the time always due Sunday night at um, 11.59 p.m. So I have like more independent time where like I could get that done. I could create schedules for myself and yeah. Okay. Give, a, give me a work-based learning experience um, that, that you've kind of had in, in, your, in this health career is kind of something outside of the classroom, whether it be at a hospital, what, what do you do? Okay. So um, I would say like the work experience that has helped me a lot would be that my CNA clinicals. Um, I was a CNA my junior year of high school I got certified for it so last year um and then COVID came so like it kind of I was gonna work as a CNA this year but obviously I can't anymore like I'm staying away from that mm -hmm. um but I would say like clinicals we were working in a nursing home and we had like a requirement amount of hours to do it and I would say that really like reaffirmed my post high school plans for wanting to be a nurse because that really showed me like that I love working with the patients there and I love like seeing them smile and hearing their stories and that just kind of really showed me that I know that I want to be there and just like Elizabeth and Beth were saying like without that class I wouldn't know 100% if this is the pathway I want to be going into. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. What are your current plans after high school? Um, so after high school, I want to attend Harper for two years just to get my associates. And then I want to go out of state to get my bachelor's in nursing. And then I want to go into forensic nursing after that. Okay. And how did you hear about forensic nursing? Um, so there's a teacher at Rolling Meadows High School that has a bunch of speakers that comes in and there's a speaker who works as a forensic nursing, which it just happened that I so attended that day. And she talked about all her job. And ever since I was little, I was just like, I really wish there was a job that could like, I could be involved with like crimes while also being a nurse. And I was just like, I did not think that existed at all. So I just... I just kind of went with whatever there was, but then she came in and then I was like, wow, like this is the perfect pathway for me. So I would definitely recommend going to any speakers that you hear are that are coming to the high school. That's awesome. That's great advice. Thank you very much. That's a very interesting story and, and how you came about that. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go back up and ask, ask you, uh, Beth, a few questions about uh, the, the classroom environment at, uh, it, we, we can say kind of in a non-COVID era, 
what, what can a student expect in a, in a high school classroom, either Rolling Meadows or Buffalo Grove? What does it look like? What do they do? How is it different from a normal classroom? Yeah. Okay, Kyle, and that's the first thing. Every classroom looks different. Um, if you walk into the classroom, the desks are there, you know, that part looks normal, but in the back of the room, there are usually five to six beds. So it looks like a hospital ward, or it looks like a nursing home. We have mannequins that are very lifelike that we're going to practice the skills on. We have hospital equipments, we have wheelchairs, we have blood pressure cuffs, we have pulse oximeters, which is the thing you need to check oxygen. So the class gives us some theory and background. And then what we do is normally we practice in the lab, the skills that we're learning that we're going to need to get certified. Uh, so we would practice blood pressures on each other. Uh, once students practice on each other, then they get skill tested where I check and make sure they're doing it. Um, one of the skills we do is transfer people from a bed to a wheelchair because you need to, I need to know that the students can do it safely on each other before they're going to do it in the clinical setting. So we do definitely a lot of hands-on. And this is where I think there's that moment where students realize, wow, I'm really good at turning patients or I'm really good at understanding why I need to do this. So that's that critical thinking that Elizabeth was talking about. We're not just teaching the skills, we're trying to teach you why you're doing it and then what observations you should look for when something's gonna be abnormal. So it's a really hands-on, really a fun class once we get into the, into the lab. I can tell you those, the, the mannequins are, are a lot of fun until the summer comes. And I'm, I'm one of the people that works in the building in the summer. And they can freak you out when they're in the middle of a hallway propped up when no one's supposed to be in school and you turn a corner and it's dark. Uh, and I learned that the hard way, many, many a summer. It gets me every time. So yes, I, I, I know exactly the mannequins that you're, that you're talking about, at least at, at Elk Grove High School. Um, Elizabeth, I'd like to ask you a question about the kind of the financial aspects of dual credit or is there advantages to a student kind of taking courses in high school and then taking Harper College? Uh, how, how does it all work financially? Actually, that's a great question. Uh, because of our partnership, um, there is very low cost for the students to take the class. Um, there are some things that may occur as far as the health requirements because we need to make sure that you meet the requirements of that hospital or the long-term care. Um, so there may be some additional costs than that, but the bulk of it is picked up between Harper College and the high school, which is why I, I am a strong advocate for taking it in high school. I think it also is, is the fair thing to do too because if, if, if nursing or, or healthcare is not the area you want to go to, why spend four years in college for something that you do not want? Um, and so I think, I think that partnership of, of getting that in high school is fantastic because then you do get the job that Ms. Beth was talking about. You can get a job almost right away and you can find out too whether this is a good value for your dollar when it's coming out of your pocket. You know, and I've, I've been fortunate to, because uh, similar question that I asked uh, of Beth, and I've been fortunate to see Harper's facilities. I mean, can you just give us a, a brief overview of what Harper has to offer as far as the just outstanding facilities in this career pathway? Exactly. Actually, it's really kind of cool. One of the things that we do have in the nursing program is we have a simulation hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and this really came through with the whole COVID is that we're able to do a lot of our clinicals in this setting in the, the, um, uh, the simulation hospital. Um, normally when I went through nursing school, you, if you got this case, you were thrilled. Oh, wow, I got this case over here. We can make those cases happen in the simulation hospital so that you can go through a code experience in the hospital and learn from it. So when the first time you do run into it, you're not quite as nervous in that. But we have got, the nursing department has a ton of different situations that you might be put into that you get to practice with, with going through it. And the neat thing too is that it, uh, it also is very hands-on, which people who are going to healthcare tend to be hands-on learners. We'd like to get our hands in doing something. So it gives them a chance to do that. With COVID, we instituted a more CNA kinds of simulations so we do have a simulation lab for CNA students um, and, uh, and simulations that we can do at the high school themselves. 
So it again, puts you in that position of, you know, here's my chance to try this out and look at what would happen if some, if a patient fell, if, uh, you know, a patient, uh, you know, aortic aneurysm and those types of things, what are the types of things that I need to do? So that's one part of it um, that I think is just absolutely fascinating. And then the labs have all of that fun stuff. At least I think it's fun mm -hmm. stuff of, of just like Miss Beth was talking about is uh, all of the things we can put our hands on for doing some of those skills. Yeah, it is an amazing facility over there and uh, having visited it, I didn't fool around with any of the equipment over there. I, I knew better. Uh, I had to. <laughs> so uh, very, very cool. Um, Priya, I'd like to, to go back up and ask you something specific to physical therapy. You know, we've kind of been hearing about different career paths from forensic nursing and CNAs and different tasks. Specific to um, physical therapy, because that is one that I hear a lot from, from high school students uh, mm -hmm. that are interested in. Uh, any advice or tips for a, for a student, specifically if they believe they want to become a, uh, a physical therapist? Right. So physical therapy in general, I mean, there are so many areas that students can um, kind of um, show their interest in. Um, so it's always good to know what, I mean, kind of figure out what your area of interest is. So if it's like pediatrics, you have athletics, you have uh, ortho, you have neuro, you have uh, PTs in the skilled nursing facilities. So I guess it's very important that you know which your area of interest is because technically everyone, every area has its own um, sense of fun. It has its own sense of, uh, you know, where it, it could be challenging and stuff. So I think it's very important that they know which area that, which field that they like to kind of go into. Um, uh, typically the ortho is kind of like most people like they do like it um and i've had few students who said i like pediatrics without realizing it's, it's not easy it's not just playing with kids uh <laughs> they do have to it is pretty challenging so i think it, it, like when i did tell that it's about um you know observations and um kind of spending time in different clinics it's important that they kind of try out different settings to kind of know and thereby kind of know like oh this is what it is and kind of be help it, it becomes easier for them to choose the path they like sure yeah that's that's great that's great um you know beth we probably have i'm keeping an eye on the clock and i, I don't want to uh, go over our time here but i was wondering you know extracurricular activities um that kind of relate to this career field do you know of any at uh, rolling meadows buffalo grove or in district 214 that kind of relate to um, this health science career field? I, I think there's a health uh, careers club that they have. Victoria, maybe you are aware of that. Yeah, uh, Ms. Kupkowski, she's a teacher at Rolling Meadows High School. She created mm -hmm. it about, well, she's a sponsor for it. And she, about two or three years ago. So it's very new. Yeah. That's great. I'll, I'll speak to it a little bit because I do know a little bit at Elk Grove High School. Yeah, the Health Careers Club. Um, and they it's really kind of designed a, some social activities really to for students who are interested in this and and have a have kind of a passion. And, and that, that's how you can find out about uh, different careers and amazing things that are happening in the field. Um, so and I know I believe all schools have something kind of centered around uh, a co-curricular for for health science. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, do you have any other last advice as we kind of round this out here that that uh, high school student or we probably have eighth graders with us here, anything that they should know? The one thing too, and I know Miss Beth kind of alluded to it, is that a lot of the programs we have what's called stackable careers. Mm -hmm. And so the, the CNA is a, a part one. You could take your time then and work maybe for a little bit if you're not sure. You can work as a CNA. And then maybe two, three years later, you decide you want to go on to nursing and go into LPN, or you want to go on to something else. But it gives you a chance uh, to, to kind of uh, explore that or work as the, a CNA or that in the hospital. In the hospital, it's a PCT. So they're the same things. It's just where they are actually working. You can go ahead and make some money while you're waiting to decide which way you want to go in that. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great way to start off and you can go into physical therapy after that. The other thing too, I would like to add into there and I'll be real quick is that when you, if you decide to go into medicine and become a physician, 
that line on your resume saying that you worked as a CNA and you became a CNA can be very helpful too, because then they say, you have already touched patients, you have interacted with patients, you've got, you know what you're getting into. And so this is a good bet to have you in our, in our physician's program or nursing program in that. Seems like the patient care is universal, universally yes. needed in all these areas from physical therapy to physicians. So um, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that sounds like sage advice. Uh, Victoria, I just one, one last question for you is um, best piece of advice you got uh, from a teacher, a counselor uh, that, that you'd like to share on uh, with any other students. Okay, yeah, um, definitely, I know almost like everyone says this, but it's like, don't go on to nursing if, or anything in the health career field, if that's not something you're really dedicated to, like if you don't have that passion mm -hmm. for it, because it's such like a hard course, it's very hard to get into. So it's just like, if you're, it's a lot of stress. So if it's not something you're passionate about or something you find you'll be that successful in, then there's no point in stressing that much over it if you won't find happiness in the end result. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something really important because I know a lot of people say like, oh, like that's a good field to go into or like my family wants to go, want me to go into this field, but just like there's no point in putting that much pressure on yourself and that much stress if you're not gonna be happy with the end result. Can I add to that a little no. bit too? Mm -hmm. And that is, is that we all have really bad days, but if it's something you genuinely love to do, you, the next morning you get yourself out of bed and you say, but this is still what I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, good, good. Beth, same question to you as a, a retired nurse and, and now a high school teacher, any, any last pieces of advice? Well, I was advised by somebody to be a CNA first because I expressed in high school that, you know, I was pretty good in science class and I thought, well, maybe I'll be a nurse. And somebody said to me, don't do that unless you try it first because you might not like it. And it was a lot of stuff to absorb as a high schooler, but I found that I had a knack for it. And like Miss Elizabeth said, I got up and I'm like, wow, I worked on a cardiac floor. I worked with bypass patients. I ended up doing cardiac rehab exercise classes. So I was educated educating the patients and really try something first. If you're thinking of physical therapy, maybe you could volunteer at a clinic. Maybe you can get a micro internship. If you're thinking of working in a lab, try to find some way to get in the back door or the side door. So you can either observe what the person's doing, or you could do a little bit of work to see if that's the path you want to do and ask people questions, ask them why they like their job and see if that's the same path that you want to take. That's great. All of this is just just great, great advice. I have a, a partner here tonight, Erin Teresi, who's our dual credit, uh, really all things dual credit for District 214, and she's kind of monitoring the chat. And I want to make sure we get a, a chance to, if there's any questions that we didn't answer, we have a minute or two. Erin, is there anything that we that we didn't hit on here tonight? You know, I haven't really gotten very many questions. So if anyone does have a question, feel free to um, submit it in the chat. Um, in the last session, and maybe we're not getting this question because we've already covered it, but um, there was a lot of questions about um, going in and out of the pathway by all means. Um, that's something that students can do. So if you try out intro to healthcare um, your freshman year and you don't like it, you can go on to another pathway. If you are a junior or um, yeah, a junior or sophomore or junior, you're absolutely able to join the pathway a little bit late. So talk to your counselor about that. That's kind of our takeaway from tonight. If any of this interests you, your counselor has a lot of information um, that they can share with you. I think that's true. Yeah, in District 214, we're not, we don't have career academies that you may have uh, heard about in other other neighboring districts. It is a, it's career pathways where you, you kind of can come and go and Hopefully, our goal is by the time you leave, find your passion. And if it's not in a health science area, you, you can go and try and find that elsewhere. So that's a, that's a really, really good point, Erin. Thanks for sharing. Um, we got one question of what is the salary? Um, that's a hard one because it's such a wide range. Um, I would definitely encourage you to look into that a little bit um, with the actual career you're interested in going into. Mm -hmm. I know um, the Bureau um, Labor Statistics. Thank you. That's the word. Yeah. It's been a long day. It, 
Yeah. <laughs> It is an awesome site, which can give you a lot of information about where the jobs are and what the future for that particular job is, as far as how, what the need is. But I'm going to tell you, they're going to need lots of healthcare providers in the next few years. Um, we just got another one. How do I get prior experience in a specific health field as a high school student? Um, well, I think for that one, there's a couple of different answers. If you're interested in um, going into something that's not CNA or um, health or patient facing, you can absolutely um, reach out to your counselor and get some information about a micro internship or the internship program at District 214, um, where you can get some smaller um, work-based learning experiences while you are in high school. They facilitate those for you and um, work with one of our community partners to get you placed in that. Um, another way to get experience while in high school would be the CNA course. Absolutely. Um, that's some work-based learning that's a, embedded in the course, um, which I know we talked a lot about tonight. Yeah. I think the, yes, I'm glad you brought up the micro internships, internships. There, there are opportunities on, on breaks of school, whether it be winter break or spring break to get an experience and, um, not be very intimidating at the same time where you can, get some work-based learning experiences and without having to make a major choice that you're doing something for the, for the whole year. Cause uh, sometimes that, that can be, uh, be a little scary. So good point. Um, are there other classes not mentioned I can take? Mr. Burt, would you mind scrolling yep. down? I will, I will go back to that. Thank slide. you. So Hard to see. Uh, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, guidebook kind of gives students an idea of classes that they can take. This is the pathway, but it's absolutely up to the student. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the general pathway is that students take introduction to health care or exercise physiology first their freshman year. And then sophomore year, it's introduction to health care part two and medical terminology. And junior year is when we start to see kind of a little bit of variation based on what the students are interested in. Um, that would be when you could start taking CNA as a junior, but if you're not interested in going into CNA, um, there are other courses, or even if you're interested in going into CNA, there are still other courses. Um, health science is very science-based. So mm -hmm. we encourage students to take, um, I believe it's called honors, honors healthcare physics. Um, yep, which is that's, paired at, mm -hmm. that's at Elk Grove, right? Um, it's paired at a couple of the high schools with um, another dual credit course, um, human anatomy and physiology. So that's a great one for students to get an experience with. And then senior year, um, if you're interested in going into the middle college program, like Victoria did, uh, that's really another choose your own adventure. You um, let us know what program you're interested in going into over at Harper, and then we put you into the coursework that is um, applicable in that program. Um, if students aren't interested in middle college, there's also um, AP science coursework that they are able to take senior year. Yes, um, that's some great information. I'm glad we did scroll back down to kind of see the full course information. Um, we, are, we are coming to a close, and I want to take some time to remind families that we gave you a lot of information tonight. There's more information that you can find on all uh, on these uh, career pathways that we talked about health science and many others. Uh, I encourage you to go to discover214.org. Um, that's where th this whole night kind of was organized from. And there is our academic handbooks, our career pathway books, and just a plethora of information about all the different career pathways we offer here in 214. So please do check that out. And then you can actually go back to that website and click on the link to kind of close the night out. There's some more information there. Um, but I would like to thank Priya from Atletico. Thank you for sharing your story and journey tonight. And Elizabeth, always a pleasure to hear about, uh, to hear from you and hear about Harper College and Beth, your experiences at Rolling Meadows in Buffalo Grove. Thank you. And Victoria, it was great. Uh, nice to see a student. Uh, I don't get to see that all uh, very often anymore, but I appreciate you sharing um, your, your thoughts with us tonight. So thank you, everyone, and uh, have a great evening.